Hello and Mingalaba, I am Henry Zin. Welcome to Myanmar Today. Our top stories and reports for today. David Tanner's report on 2nd Bidanzu Ludo, first day of the 13th formal meeting. Willinson has a story on upper areas of Myanmar encountering over danger level floods. Lastly, David Tanner will give us the detailed report on KBZ Pay, puts the spotlight on connections in first nationwide brand campaign. Before we get to the reports, let's have a quick look at the latest local news from around Myanmar. State Councillor and Union Minister for Foreign Affairs Don San Suu Kyi received the United Nations Secretary General's Special Envoy on Myanmar, Ms. Mrs. Christine Schreiner Bergener, on Monday at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Nibidor. During the meeting, the Special Envoy shared her experience of her recent visit to Rakhine State and briefed the State Councillor of her work plan, including submission of the report on the situation of Myanmar to the United Nations General Assembly. They also exchanged views on stepping up efforts for commencement of the repatriation process, social cohesion among the different communities in Rakhine State, improving the ground situation, including ensuring security and greater freedom of movement, providing better access to basic needs such as education and health care for all communities. Two people have been contracted the H1N1 seasonal flu in Loiko, according to the state's medical services and health department. Speaking at the department meeting, Hall department head Dr. Tay Luin said the seasonal influenza occurs in the rainy and winter seasons and there have been 244 people across Myanmar who have caught the virus as of 13th of July. He said 43 people with the virus have died with the highest death rate from Yangon region at 35, followed by three in ARD region, two each in Bago and Sakain regions, and one in northern Shan state. The doctor said the two residents of Loiko who have contracted the virus are both children and that they are now in stable condition, but warned everyone to exercise caution as the seasonal virus can be fatal if left unchecked. Nearly 1,700 people from 556 households in Simbo, Mijina District, Gachin State have been evacuated from areas flooded by the swollen Ayawadi River. The water level in the river crossed the danger mark of 307cm on Sunday and inundated low-lying areas of the town. The flood victims have been accommodated at the temporary shelters set up in the highland areas and monasteries. Eight schools have been closed on account of the floods. Eight, including food and water, have been distributed to flood victims by volunteers, including departmental officials and the Dumbledore man. That's all with the local news. You're still with me on MI Radio's Myanmar Today. And I believe it's time now for our first report. On Monday, the second Bidanzu Luto, first day of the 13th formal meeting, was held at Bidanzu Luto, Nebido. The meeting was attended by 181 of Yangon Business University students and 250 honourable guests. There were 657 representatives that attended the Pidanzu Ludo. David Tenner reports. The Assembly of the Union Myanmar Bidanzu Ludo is the national level bicameral legislature of Myanmar established by the 2008 National Constitution. The Bidanzu Ludo is made up of two houses, the Amyuda Ludo House of Nationalities, a 224-seat upper house, as well as the Bidu Ludo, a 440-seat lower house, House of Representatives. On the second time of Bidanzu Ludo 30th formal meeting first day, the meeting was attended by 181 of Yangon Business University students and 250 honorable guests. There were 657 representatives that attend to Pidanzu Ludo with 42 representatives absent with permission, with the focus of this meeting being the presentation from the Alliance Committee in renovating the constitution of Myanmar. With that being said, let's find out how this committee was formed firstly as well as the members of the committee from the speaker of Pidanzu Ludo. Ludo Guzemiak. Nangan ye badi edidine, 
with variety of political party as well as Damador representative and with 45 representative of Bidang Zuludo, the Alliance of the Renovation of the 2008 Constitution of the Republic of the Union of Myanmar was formed and the Bidang Zuludo office on February 19, 2019. From there, the committee hold many meetings under each topics of the constitutions that review from all the meetings and perspective of the Alliance for the Renovation of 2008 Constitution of Myanmar was already being submitted to the Speaker of the Assembly of the Union of Myanmar, Bidang Zuludo. With that being said, the review will be presented to Zuludo now. Let's also hear out for what the comedy focused on and their major decisions in making their suggestions. <laughs> The meeting and discussion that our comedy have done were in the focus on these five major focuses. The five major focuses are firstly is to focus on renovating the area of constitution which is holding our process on achieving democracy, renovating in the way that all of the comedy members agree and to prevent later conflicts between the comedy. Secondly is to focus on balanced policy in three-way sector which are the judiciary, governing and conversely. Also to focus on cancelling the law in which is holding the freedom to hold justified elections in the country. Thirdly is to focusly renovate on constitution which are holding to achieve inner peace within country and also to achieve a constitution which complements the circumstances of which the country is aiming for which is to be a democratic and federal country as we are in the ongoing process too as well. Fourthly is to adopt a constitution which the representative of democratic party, representative of all the ethnic group leaders, representative of Damador, representative of Pidang Zuludo and all the ethnic group and people of Myanmar accept. Finally, with our major focus being on accepting the comment from Pidang Zuludo for the suggestions from the comedy and adopt the renovated constitution as soon as possible. <laughs> The first section of the suggestions that were made in the meeting is the fundamental policies of Myanmar, with a total of 231 suggestions being made throughout the meetings. The second section, which is the foundation of the country, with 111 suggestions. The third section, which is the head of person, with 218 suggestions. The fourth section, focusing on law, with a suggestion of 859. The fifth section being the governing sector, with a suggestion of 1,211. The sixth section, Judiciary sector with the 632 suggestion, the seventh section, Demodor with the 42 suggestion, the eighth section focusing on citizens' rights, 58 suggestions, the ninth section focusing on election with 45 suggestions, 20 suggestions on the tenth section, which is the political party sector, the eleventh section with 128 suggestions, twelfth section, which is the renovation of constitution with 27 suggestions, the thirteenth section with 13 suggestions, the fourteenth section with 102 suggestions and 15 section with 68 suggestions. These suggestions are divided in three kinds which is to renovate, cancel and add. There were total suggestions of 3,765. Thank you guys. Hope you enjoyed the report. Reporter David Tanner signing off for now and you guys have a good day. That's a report on 2nd Pilon Zuludo, first day of the 13th formal meeting. We'll be taking a look at the stocks and currency exchange rates in Yangon in a while, but let's check on where the updates now in the three major cities in Myanmar. In Yangon, a couple of thunderstorms around. The daily outlook is around 30 degrees Celsius high, but it feels like 37 degrees Celsius. There's a 62% chance of rain for the day. In Nebido, considerable cloudiness, then occasional rain and a thunderstorm. The daily outlook is around 31 degrees Celsius high, but it feels like 37 degrees Celsius. 62% 60, chance of rain for the day. In Mandalay, considerable cloudiness, a thunderstorm in spots this afternoon. The daily outlook is around 36 degrees Celsius high, but it feels like 40 degrees Celsius. 40% chance of rain for the day. Before we move on to stocks and currency exchange rates, let's take a look at the second report for today.
In 11 cities and towns of upper areas of Myanmar are being flooded and in some areas such as Mijina, Mrak'u, the water level reached up to danger levels. Thoraswe's in reports. Starting from July 8 and 9, water from Eyawadi and Chindrin rivers have increased. 11 cities and towns are being flooded, which are the coastal areas of upper parts of Eyawadi River, Chindrin River, Sedan River, Limyu River, and Galadan River. Water level reached to the danger level in Nijina at the night of 12 July and it reached up to the highest level of 1,229 feet. The water from Limyu River reached up to 4 feet above the danger level in Myau on 12 July. The Director General of Myanmar Meteorology and Hydrology Department, Dr. John Mo Wu, said. Water is to flow from upper to the lower areas along the rivers. If there is less rain, the water level in the upper areas will drop sooner. However, we have predicted that there can be more rain in the coming two or three days. So we have to still be aware of flood in Nijina. <laughs> In the middle and lower areas of Eyawadi River, it is still 10 to 15 feet lower than danger water level. Water flowing from the upper areas can reach to the middle parts in the coming three or four days. For Eyawadi River, it takes about 13 days to reach Hindara from Nijina. In the previous year, some coastal areas of lower part of the rivers reached to the danger water level and gained the recorded water levels in the coastal areas of Sedan River, Bagu River, and Danwen River. For the upper areas, except Mongyua, other areas reached close to the danger water level but not became higher. <laughs> ตัวบัวเส้นอะไรอย่างเงี้ยพอดีเอเดียเจ้าบัวเนี่ยดีตู้ดีอ่ะดีตู้อันนี้เอเดียเจ้าบัวเนาะตัวเจ้าอีโย
Now there was no camps built ahead in Kachin, so the residents are living at the public buildings such as churches, monasteries and schools. We provide rations, fiber bowls and life checkers. The relief supplies are available in all regions and states. The residents of coastal areas are to be alerted and to preparation to relocate during the flood. That's all for now. This is your reporter Dora Susan from MI Radio. That's a report on upper areas of Myanmar encountering over danger level floods. All right, let's now check on the currency rates from Myanmar's central bank. One US dollar is at 1,510 jats. One Chinese renminbi is at 219 jats. One euro is at 1,702 jats. One pound sterling is at 1,895 jats. One Singapore dollar is at 1,113 jats. One Malaysian ringgit is at 367 jats. One Thai baht is at 48 jats. And the Indian rupee is at 22 jats. Gold is trading at 1,413 US dollars. Silver is at $15, and Brent crude oil is at $59. On the Yangon Stock Exchange, FMI is up 500 at 11,500. MTSH is up 150 at 3,200. MCB is down 500 at 8,000. FPB is 23,500. TMH is at 3,000. And that's all on currency rates and Yangon Stock Exchange for today. This is Myanmar Today, broadcasting live from Myanmar International Radio. You can visit our website at miradio.com.mm and listen to our radio programs live on the website. If you're on FM, catch us on 96.1 FM in Yangon, 96.5 in Mandalay, and 96.7 in Nebidor. Or better yet, download MI Radio app on both iOS and Android devices so you can listen to our radio programs anywhere in the world. Moving on to third report. Last Friday, KBZ Pay launched its first nationwide brand campaign aimed at inspiring people across the country to enjoy the benefits of using Myanmar's leading mobile wallet and, in particular, the enhanced connectivity it facilitates between people, families, friends and businesses. The campaign features a series of film ads to be aired on TV and online channels which depict stories about the connections that KBZ Pay facilitates for customers. David Tenner reports. With Myanmar fast digitizing and leapfrogging into mobile first economy, KBZ also plays one of the important roles in this transformation. Streamlining everyday tasks that involve money in a way that is fast and secure for people and business across the country. In less than a year from the introduction of KBZ Pay in August 2018, 18,000 KBZ Pay employees across the country have digitally onboarded more than 2 million fully KYC with more than 100,000 merchants and agents. With that being said, let's also hear out from Uso Kuku, head of the agent banking of KBZ Pay. Okay, uh, this is uh, Soko, is uh, from the head of the agent banking of the KBZP. Actually, uh, this event is that uh, we have uh, in the KBZP, uh, in the last year itself, we launched for the KBZP. It's about uh, from August 2018. And since from here, we have about 2 million uh, customers over there. And also we have uh, agent and merchant is about 100,000 over. So that's why in because of this one, uh, we are planning for this campaign. Is that the connect uh, everybody like the friends, uh, agent and merchant and the family, everything connect for the, this campaign. So that's why we make a, this campaign to make it connect to everyone for that. What will KBZ next step for Myanmar's financial sector? Let's find out. In the next itself, uh, uh, ours as uh, Myanmar strategy will be the cashless and digital payment. So in the cashless and digital payment, is a KBZ is a major part of the thing we are playing over. And KBZ a bank itself uh, is a is a machine for 100% financial inclusion over. So in future, people will make a pay for the digitally. Then uh, we are reducing using the cash. It will make the faster growth of the, the economy and also support for the country. Uh, KBCP is using the, those uh, well-recognized uh, international platform and also using the technology. So that's why in KBCP, uh, before 
extra accessing we are using for the two-factor verification like SMS OTP and also using for the, the PIN, the password. Before making make the, any transition, we are uh, put, asking to put the PIN number. This is a fast and, and the two-factor authentication. But anyhow, we are using all the financial service is using via the mobile. That's why in our mobile has to be secure that we encourage people to use like, let's say in the mobile for in the lock pane and fingerprint. Also, we encourage to use for that. With the cashless system booming all over the world, I've also asked him how is KBZ as well striving for this sector. Let's find out. Probably we are saying that is that we are focusing on the cashless payment society. In this case, the cashless payment is like we can make a payment or make a transfer easily. So instead of using for the physical cash to transfer each and other, so the digital payment is very useful and also improve for the bank uh, on the economy as well. Definitely, uh, KBZP uh, have an offer for many uh, wallet services. It's like uh, we can have a cash chain, cash out, and the top up and transfer. Especially, not only that, uh, we are also providing for the bus ticketing and also the pocket money and also donation function as well. KBZ also will be airing its film ads, which will be covering the interactions between characters who go about their daily life with KBZ. The film ads complemented with a campaign theme song titled Bawadu Amiyashi Do, a localized version of the song You Are The Reason. It was recorded by popular singer Nizi May. For that, I have interviewed Nizi May as well for her perspective about KBZ and the song as well. Most importantly, KBZ Pay is convenient for me. Mostly the fees for transaction and withdrawing are free. And for the theme song, it's the Myanmar version of the famous song, You Are The Reason. It is one of my favorite songs. So when KBZ Pay offered me to cover up these songs, I accepted it happily, of course. It is really meaningful for mostly everyone. Thank you guys, hope you enjoyed the report, reporter David Tanner signing off for now and you guys have a good day. That's a report on KBZ Pay puts the spotlight on connections in first nationwide brand campaign. That's all the reports we have for today. Now let's explore a little more to see if there's anything strange or interesting happening around the world. The Open University is partnering with NASA on a mission to the moon. Scientists at the Milton Keynes based university have developed an instrument which monitors the very thin atmosphere near the moon's surface. The instrument, called PIT-MS, will be carried to the moon in 2021 under NASA's Artemis program. Dr. Simon Barber from the Open University said it will help investigate the concept of a natural water cycle on the moon. There is increasing evidence from orbiting spacecraft that water may migrate away from equatorial regions until it becomes tightly trapped in, at permanently cold locations, according to Dr. Barber. It is hoped that mission, missions could pave the way for the next human visitors to the moon. In other news, Fishermen are continuing to illegally discard dead fish back into the sea, according to a House of Lords inquiry. The inquiry looked at the impact of the ban on fishing discards six months after new rules took effect. The committee's report said the new regulations have had little impact, but industry leaders said this was the wrong conclusion. Fishing discards were prohibited after a campaign pain by the chef Hugh Fernley White and Stall. The EU regulations were designed to stop fishermen throwing unwanted fish back into the sea dead. Instead, 
obliging skippers to land them. But the inquiry report claimed little had changed since the ban came into force, with no indication of boats being forced to stop fishing or undersized fish being landed. That's all we have for now on Myanmar Today. You can leave your comments and messages on our Facebook posts and catch Myanmar Today on radio from 7.30am to 8am, 1 to 1.30pm and from 7.30 to 8 in the evening, Monday to Friday. Thank you for being with us on MI Radio's Myanmar Today. I am Henry Zin. We'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day.